could, um, I mean, that the language somehow does you in, of course, isn't true at all. He was then taken off to the Washington Post offices where he found somebody uh, high up on, um, I, I was going to say Jason Robards' staff, but you'll get my point, uh, who was a Portuguese speaker, and they chatted happily in Portuguese together, even though Portuguese has effectively been uh, legally banned by the Indonesians for a long time. And the interesting thing was to watch that boy and the head of this military intelligence man who had actually been a senior intelligence officer in Delhi, and you could see who had confidence, which of the two thought the future was on his side. So I think in spite of the grim uh, news of uh, this massacre, in, uh, it's not the end of a long series of murders. It's the beginning of the end for Indonesian policy. There is much more concern now than there's ever been about East Timor in the outside world. The Indonesians have been forced to withdraw from the international consortium of aid because the Dutch government uh, criticized them for what's going on here. The Canadian government briefly suspended aid. Uh, times have changed, and, and, but most importantly, the logic of history itself is, shows us, I think, quite clearly that the massa, the masses, have the future on their side. I'll have a somewhat different perspective from the, <laughs> the others who have spoken before me about many things, but not about one of them. What happened on November 12, 1991 in Dili, East Timor was a tragedy. As the description by Amy and by Alan makes that clear. The film makes that clear. It was a tragedy. Uh, nothing can defend what took place there. No one should attempt to. The United States State Department condemned it condemned it, and condemned it forcefully. The Indonesian army and police units fired on unarmed civilians engaged in a political demonstration. They killed and wounded scores of people. It was indefensible. Another tragedy of that incident, in my opinion, is, that the, set, is the setback it represented to progress, because there had been progress in at least the previous two years in East Timor. Following the arrival in late 1989 of a new military commander there, the State Department had noticed a marked decline in human rights abuses. General Waro developed a cooperative relationship with East Timor Governor Karaskalao and with Bishop Bello of the Catholic Church. He began to emphasize civic action efforts in the villages rather than combat operations in the field. At the same time, East Timor was open to outside visitors. That improving atmosphere clearly changed last fall when discussions between Indonesia and Portugal under the UN Secretary General's auspices brought tentative agreement for a visit to East Timor by a Portuguese parliamentary delegation. That news raised the hopes of anti-integrationist elements. It also led to increased Indonesian security operations. And that combination of factors greatly heightened tensions there. When the visit was canceled at the last moment because of the dispute over credentials of a journalist, frustrations among the anti-integrationists heightened. And those frustrations found expression on November 12th during the visit of a UN official to Dili, which coincided with the commemoration service for the death two weeks earlier of an anti-integrationist who died as a result of a confrontation with the pro-integrationist forces at Montel Church. During a march through city streets, anti-Indonesia demonstrators were vocal and a few were violent. An army major was stabbed. It appears that local military units then took revenge. The United States government publicly condemned the Delhi incident. We said, and we said flatly, no provocation could have possibly warranted such a wanton military reaction. The excessive use of force was unjustified. It was reprehensible. We immediately called for a complete and credible investigation leading to appropriate punishments for those who resorted to or condoned such deadly force. We clearly conveyed our views at high levels in both Jakarta and Washington. 
Our embassy in Jakarta immediately dispatched a team of officers to Dili. I was among them. At the time, our hope and expectation was that Indonesia would move vigorously to find the facts, assess responsibility, appropriately punish those responsible, and take steps to prevent such an event from occurring again. We have been encouraged by Indonesia's response. President Suharto promptly formed the National Investigatory Commission. Its preliminary report clearly answered several key questions. Was excessive force used? Yes, it was. Should the military personnel involved be punished? Yes, they should. Was it government policy? No, it wasn't. We and most other concerned foreign observers, including Australia, Japan, and the European community, have judged the preliminary report to be a serious and responsible effort by the government of Indonesia. The report confronted those very tough issues for Indonesia, and it directly refuted many of the initial assertions about the event put forward by the Indonesian Armed Forces, including its Commander-in-Chief, General Teresa Trisno. I'll just capsulize what that report said. It said the official casualty totals had been far too low. It moved them up to more realistic levels, flatly contradicting the earlier figures announced by the Armed Forces. It made the key determination that the excessive force was used and that some troops were clearly out of control. It found that this incident was not the result of government policy, and it asserted that those who violated the law must be prosecuted. President Suharto immediately followed up, and we have been encouraged by those follow-up actions. On receiving the preliminary findings, which were critical of his army, which has been his base of support, the President immediately made the report public and extended his deep apology to the families of innocent victims. He has publicly apologized to the nation three times. The President immediately relieved two general officers of their duties, the regional and provincial military commanders. The lower level commanders all the way down the chain have also been relieved. He ordered formation of a military council of honor to recommend army punishments and reforms with the intention that no such incident shall ever take place again in Indonesia. On the basis of the Council of Honor's recommendation, six senior officers are being disciplined, three of them being dismissed outright from the service. Eight officers and enlisted men face courts martial, and five others remain under investigation. President Suharto also ordered the Armed Forces Commander, General Teresa Trisno, to account for the missing people. And he ordered increased efforts to improve the well-being of the Timorese people. We have monitored the situation in East Timor closely since November 12th. I'd appreciate an opportunity to be heard, too. Thank you. We have monitored the situation in East Timor closely since November 12th. Embassy Jakarta has sent officers to the province five times since the incident. The most recent visit in March reaffirmed earlier findings that there is absolutely no evidence to substantiate allegations of additional killings since November 12th. Some detainees were abused in the days immediately after November 12th. We understand that such mistreatment ceased thereafter. The most recent visits confirmed earlier reports that while tensions in Dili do continue, they have eased considerably from November. Economic and social life have returned to normal, although security does remain tight. Eight demonstrators in Dili and five in Jakarta are being tried on criminal charges. The military courts martial should begin soon. International observers, including officers from Embassy Jakarta, have been attending the criminal trials and are seeking to observe the upcoming courts martial. The State Department will continue to monitor closely the Indonesian government's efforts to follow through on the National Commission's judgments of responsibility. That process continues. And we will continue to watch the human rights situation in East Timor with great care as we have. In particular, we have urged the Indonesian government to maintain an open access to the province. The State Department believes that the interests of truth and the amelioration of the situation in East Timor are clearly best served by a policy of more, not less access there. Some people believe Jakarta's response to these events has been inadequate and that diplomatic suasion is insufficient. They urge that we cut 